thank you to you for the introduction. And I, yeah, I'm Moritz Mönig, and I welcome you for uh, the presentation of our paper mitigation of IPv6 router spoofing attacks with P4. This talk is structured as following. First of all, I will introduce you the neighbor discovery protocol NDP. So how does it work and what's the problem with this protocol and how to address this problem with the RA guard approach. In the second part, I will explain the system design of our RA guard implementation, the way the router advertisement headers are passed and how the configuration modes, the stateless and the stateful RA guard modes are working. Next, I will show you how we validated the RA guard implementation using an attack scenario. And in the end, I will come to a conclusion. So first of all, what is this uh, talk all about? It is about the auto configuration of IPv6 and how it can be misused as an attack vector, which particularly affects the security of public networks. To address this problem, we published the first open source P4 based RA guard implementation that is able to detect and prevent NDP based man in the middle attacks. And it provides automatic configuration and monitoring. This implementation should enable researchers to further study the, this respective IPv6 security mechanism. Okay, the neighbor discovery protocol NDP it is a protocol that is used by IPv6 for auto configuration of networks. NDP provides nine functionalities overall, including the router discovery functionality. The NDP pro, uh, uh, protocol introduces five new ICMP v6 messages, the router solicitation and the router advertisement that are used for the router discovery. And in this work, we are mainly focusing on the router discovery mechanism. So how does this router uh, discovery mechanism works? Every new node on the network will ask for the router that are on the network by sending a router solicitation message. Every router on the network will receive this router solicitation message and answer with a router advertisement message that contains all the necessary information for the host to set up its network interface. But what's the problem with this protocol? NDP neither verifies the integrity nor the authenticity of NDP messages. So any host on the network on the link is able to spoof any kind of NDP message. In this work, we are only focusing on spoofed router advertisement packets with a spoofed router advertisement packet, an attacker is able, able to perform denial of service attacks um, and man in the middle attacks. For example, an attacker could time out the default router by setting its lifetime to zero or inject itself as the default router to redirect the traffic. This not only affects IPv6 networks, also IPv4 networks are affected if they are containing IPv6 capable hosts. So an attacker could easily create an IPv6 overlay inside an IPv4 network. So how to address this problem? Uh, the easiest way would to reject any NDP messages and manually configure the network, but this, of course, wouldn't be really scalable. Another promising approach is the secure neighbor discovery protocol called SEND, which is based on cryptographic verification. But this protocol is hard to deploy because every host in the network needs to provisioned by a cryptographic trust anchor. anchor. Therefore, we chose the IPv6 router advertisement guard or called RA guard according RFC 6105. This is compared to the SEND protocol a lightweight solution. It is already implemented in some proprietary switches on the market and it is based on filtering router advertisement packets on the data plane. So it's working basically like a packet-based firewall. The assumption for this approach is that every node in the network is connected through an administered layer two switch to the router. This approach proposes two configuration methods, the stateless 
configuration in which an administrator manually configures the legitimate router advertisement entries and the stateful mode in which the system learns about these entries dynamically. Okay, in the following, I explain you the system design of our RA guard implementation. The overall system design looks as follows. It consists of a control plane and a data plane, uh, which are communicating with each other with a P4 runtime API. This is a controller API that is uh, target and protocol independent. The main purposes of the control plane is to maintain the forwarding table and the filtering table and to monitor incidents. The control plane um, set up the layer two forwarding table of the data plane by creating a mapping between the destination address and the egress port. It adds host to the multicasting table for the broadcasting and it provides filtering rules either by manually configuring or automatically by processing the router advertisement packets of interfaces in the learning state. Uh, also, the control plane is responsible for the state transitions of the interface state. Every interface can be transitioned by the control plane between the states learning, filtering, blocking, or RA guard turned off. The data plane itself, it is based on the reference implementation behavior model versus two. It provides basic layer two switch functionality by forwarding packets based on the layer two forwarding table to other devices. The data plane is also able to parse and detect router advertisement packets and forwards them depending on the interface state and the filtering rules to either the control plane for monitoring or automatic configuration, or it broadcasts them to the network or it's blocking them at all. For the monitoring purpose, the data plane sends all the blocked router advertisement packets to the control plane. But the whole effectiveness of the RA guard implementation depends on the ability to detect router advertisement header. If it's not able to detect router advertisement header, it's not able to block them. And many simple RA guard implementations are easily to circumvent using the following techniques. Using IPv6 extension headers, so placing these extension headers between the IPv6 header and the router advertisement header, any implementation that only checks the next header value is not able to detect the router advertisement header at the end of the chain. Additionally, fragmentation can be used in a way that the router advertisement header uh, will be placed in a fragment after the first fragment. So it's not in the first fragment and it can only be detected by reassembling the IPv6 uh, fragments again. This would create an overhead and would uh, take the risk to make the system vulnerable to denial of service attacks. So this, uh, this way it's normally not implemented. Therefore, we are following the implementation advice according RFC 7113 uh, the first advice is to pass the entire header chain. In P4, we're implementing this by using a loop of parsing states and header stacks. And the second advice is to drop the first fragment if it doesn't contain the entire header chain. As I already mentioned, the RA guard proposes two configuration methods, the stateless and the stateful method. In the stateless mode, the router advertisement messages are forwarded based on the sender's link layer address, the ingress port, the source IP, and the prefix. These informations are matched against a table of legitimate entries, and this table is set up manually by an administrator using the controller interface that looks like this. So basically, it's working like a rule-based firewall. The stateful RA guard reduces the administration overhead by automatically configuring the system. In this um, mode, every ingress port can be in one of the following states. In the off state, where no filtering is happening at all. In the blocking state, 
in which uh, every received router advertisement packet is blocked at this interface in the forwarding state that forwards only legitimate router advertisement packets, which is working the same as the stateless RA guard and the learning state in which every RA packet is sent to the controller. The controller extracts the relevant information and builds the legitimate RA entries for the forwarding state. The controller is responsible for the state transitions and in the stateful mode, the state transitions are looking like follows. Every interface at first is in the off state and transitioned to the learning state. In the learning state, it sends the RA messages to the controller until a learning period is over. After this learning period is over, the controller will change the learning state of the interface either to the forwarding state if any router at what received on this interface and if packet was received on the interface, it will change to the blocking state. Okay, after explaining the system design, I show you how we validated our RA guard implementation using the following attack scenario. In this attack scenario, we assume that uh, the trusted router behaved correctly and an attacker tries to perform a man in the middle attack. Uh, the attacker is an outsider that is on the same links so on the same sub, sub network like the host, for example, like in public networks. And the attacker tries to eavesdrop, manipulate or interrupt the traffic. Uh, the attacker uses different combinations of IPv6 extension headers and fragmentation that are typically used to circumvent RA guard implementations. Our attack scenario is set up as following. We have a host and an attacker machine connected through a P4 switch to the router. The P4 switch implements our RA guard implementation and the host contains the router's IP as its default router. The attacker machine tries to inject itself in the routing table of the host by sending a malicious router advertisement packet to the host with a priority set to high. And if the attack was successful, the routing table of the host will be altered. The attacker machine will be the default router with a priority of high. So the host will redirect its traffic through the attacker machine. The attacker can masquerade the packets to intercept both traffic directions. All the attacks with different combinations of fragmentation and extension headers were performed first of all in the off state to check if the attacks actually work and then we performed them against the two configuration modes against the stateful and the stateless RA guard. In the end, we could um, ensure that our implementation was able to protect against uh, every kind of these attacks in this attack scenario, and they could not circumvent our RA guard implementation. Okay, now I come to the conclusion. Um, IPv6 is still vulnerable to auto-configuration attacks. This is not new. Also, IPv4 was vulnerable to these kinds of attacks. But the IPv6 extension headers and the fragmentation make the filtering more complicated. To address this problem, we proposed a P4-based detection and mitigation strategy. We published an open source proof of concept implementation of the RA guard ap approach that is able to filter a legitimate router advertisement packets and provides automatic configuration and incident monitoring. In the end, we can say that P4 offers a great opportunity to implement and network security approaches like this. I thank you for the for your attention and now you can ask some questions. For the, the presentation parts, that was, uh, I, 
seem very very practical. And so uh, I think there's uh, someone from the audience who has uh, a question. Fabio, I to the, um, the backstage. Can you? Oh. I don't see him anymore. In, okay. In the in the meantime, I actually have um, I, I have a question for you. So, for, first, I have a, 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 a just practical one about a possible, say, vulnerabilities of the system. Have you considered DDoS attacks? So, there's some interaction in in your presentation between the the control plane and the data plane. And what what happens if if the switch is flooded with with RA messages? Will they all be sent up to the controller? And could that um, could that overload the controller? Of course, but uh, this can uh, really easily be uh, mitigated with uh, some kind of. Um, flooding uh, restriction. Uh, restriction. Uh, restriction. So, um, the um, communication between the data plane and the control plane is yeah necessary to work for the system, and an attacker, of course, could try to. Uh, take down the control plane by sending a lot of illegitimate router advertisement packets, but uh, the, yeah, the control plane has to limit the monitoring of these systems to um, yeah avoid an overload. Okay, uh, that's so. It seems like you, like you considered that that then and. What, from a, can I say the P, P, P4 perspective, what um, what challenges do you have implementing this in P4? Or is there or anything at the either the, the language level, or what would have made it easier to to express this in P4? One limitation. Or problem we encountered was um, that um, in the default uh, reference implementation of P4 behavior model versus two, it was not possible to address uh, stack headers with the index. So if we are, if we want to um, pass the whole header chain of extension headers, we are saving these headers inside of um, header stacks and um, there's no possibility to address these by uh, um, at compile time unknown variable. So um, this way we had to check every extension header in, in this stack manually with a um, yeah, big if else uh, tree and uh, this also limited the number of uh, stack headers we could um, check at compile time. So, um, yeah, this was the yeah, kind of uh, limitation of P4 we, uh, we are confronted with. Uh, thank you. And one, one last question before we move on. Um, do you think you could move the control control plane control functionality into the data plane? That kind of goes to, the, to my previous question about uh, uh, denial of service attacks, about handling maybe if it, if the control plane were running in the data plane, then you could you could scale up and be resilient to to DDoS attacks. It's depending on, I think, on the hardware functionality. If the hardware can run the control plane and the data plane on the same time on the same device, I think it would be possible. But to implement this in the directly in the data plane of P4, 
um, I don't think that uh, this would be possible uh, like this way. Okay. 